Hey, Dave Larson from SchoolofVoiceOver.com again. Now, all your audio equipment needs to be balanced, but even if you don't know what that means, you'll probably end up with all balanced equipment anyway. That's pretty much the default. So these home studio audio equipment tips are to help you understand what a balanced system does so you can set it up to get the best results. Electrical noise is the big problem. It's impossible to completely avoid. What a balanced system does is block and remove some noise. It uses a very simple but really clever trick. And to get the best results, you'll want to connect your microphone to a four conductor cable for the best results. Don't worry, they don't cost much more than a regular XLR cable. They're known as quad cables. So first, let's look at how cables transmit audio signals electronically. Here, the black line represents a simple audio signal wave, a single frequency like you might get from a tuning fork or a sine wave generator. So the black line is our audio signal. We're going to follow that signal from a microphone on the left into the XLR cable and then out to a mixer on the right. From there it goes to your computer. Just remember sound moves from left to right. But instead of one audio cable, a microphone actually gives two copies of its audio signal to the XLR cable. Inside the cable, these two identical signals are each carried on a different wire. At the other end, the mixer will combine those two signals back together. Since they're identical, what happens if we merge them back together? Well, we get the same sound wave we started with. So what's the point? Why make two audio signals out of one if we're just going to merge them back together again? Well, remember that the XLR cable carries the audio signal from the mic on the left to the mixer on the right, and then of course from the mixer it goes to your computer. So here's a slightly more accurate picture of what we're talking about. Inside the microphone, there's just one audio signal that's turned into two before being handed off to the cable. Inside the cable, there are two signals until they reach the mixer, which combines them back together again at the right. But I've left out one step. The microphone actually reverses one copy of its audio signal before giving it to the cable. So at the other end, the mixer not only combines the two signals back together, it unreverses the reversed signal back into an exact copy. So what the heck is going on here? So let's simplify things again and just look at the audio signal inside the XLR cable. Here's the signal. Now, if the mixer didn't reverse it, when we combined it, they would cancel each other out, and that means you'd get complete silence. So that's why the mixer has to unreverse one of the signals before combining them. But why the heck was it reversed in the first place? Well, to see why, take a look at how noise sneaks into the system. If we didn't reverse one of the signals, it would look like this. It's inside the cable that the noise gets added. That's because there are electrical fields that affect the cable, you know, such as from a power outlet or a power strip. So the sound looks perfect going into the cable, but once it travels through the cable, some noise gets added. Obviously, I'm keeping things simple here. A waveform of real audio with noise added would look more complex than this. And here's an important tip. To limit the noise that can enter the system, Keep your XLR cable away from power sources. Worst thing to do is to lay an XLR cable right alongside a power cable. All of the space where you have that power cable next to the XLR cable, the electrical fields from the power cable are going to be putting noise into the XLR cable. So if you have to cross a power cable, make sure they cross at right angles, you know, so they don't spend a lot of time next to each other. Okay, so what happens when the mixer merges these two signals together? Well, duh, yeah, pretty much nothing. You get the main audio signal combined, this one you started with, and along with the noise that crept in along the way. But of course, remember that the microphone reverses one of the signals before it goes into the cable. Now, let's add the noise that sneaks in along the way, okay? Now, of course, the mixture is gonna unreverse the signal before combining the signals back together. Now the two audio signals are identical again, but the noise that snuck in along the way is reversed. So what happens when we combine the two signals this time? That's right, the noise cancels itself out. This is the cool trick. This is why you need a balanced system. So, the problem is, electrical fields are directional. They come from somewhere. They're not just spread equally around the cable. And the wires in the cable wrap around one another in a spiral, right? So. First one wire is on top, then the other, and so forth. 
So if you laid a power cable and the electrical field that it sends on top of an XLR cable, first one of the wires in the XLR cable would be close to or almost touching that power cable, right? And then it would spiral around then the other cable. Well, who cares? Well, what that means is because the wires get closer and farther from the source of noise, they don't get an exact copy of the noise. That Electrical cable, it's usually alternating current we're talking about. And of course, that's a signal that changes, you know, moves back and forth. The electrical field changes quickly. Bottom line, we don't get an exact copy of the noise. So when we cancel at the end, a little bit of the noise is left. But what if, just in theory, what if whenever one wire was on top in that XLR cable, it could be on, bottom, on the bottom at the same time? Well, that's what a quad cable does. It takes, in a regular cable, the A signal and the B signal. A would be just one wire, and B would be just one wire. But in the quad cable, it splits A into two wires so that as they spiral around one another, and there's different kinds of cable wrapping and different kinds of spiraling that happens. There's some pictures. But the signals each get a better copy of the noise that's created along the way. Now, so what? Is it really that much of a big deal? Well, yeah, it is. A quad cable can reduce noise by 20 to 30 dB more than a regular XLR cable. I mean, 30 dB is the difference between normal conversation and a garbage disposal. Technically, in fact, a decrease of 30 dB is a thousand times less sound energy. I helped a friend uh, swap out his XLR cable for a quad cable the other day. And he called me up and he's just blown away. Now, I suspect he had his XLR cable laying next to a power cable. And I kind of bugged him about that. I said, if you're hearing a huge decrease in noise, you probably should reposition that cable on the floor. But that's the cool thing about a quad cable. If you make a mistake, it's going to take care of a lot of that noise for you. Now, sure, you want the best audio you can get. You know, you want to inexpensively create the best studio you can. So a quad cable is the way to go. And those are today's home studio audio equipment tips. Thanks.